Now, this is the very first time I ever dealt with a ghost and is back in my hometown. We had just moved into this house. It was like right on the main street. Um, try to see how I could describe it without giving addresses out. But basically if you went through the main street that went all the way through the town, you would pass it. And is the little side street is named after somebody did a lot of like coal mining and stuff so there's well believed that there's a lot of coal mines underneath some of these houses and i thoroughly believe that the house that we lived in had a coal mine underneath of it there's no evidence to it but i'm pretty sure <clears throat> but we move into this house we move in there at the la latter half of fourth grade so this is a long time ago for me. I remember nothing really happening at first. And I remember sometime after we moved in, you know, because it was a busy street and it wasn't used to a busy street, I remember seeing shadows, you could see shadows of people like on the outside of my curtain. And I don't remember what I thought they were, but I, I want to say I said that those vampires or werewolves or something. I, I don't know. I was young. I don't really remember. But you could see shadows of people right outside my window. If that was paranormal, I don't know. It could just have been reflections of people walking down the street from the car lights. Can't really say that. But the very first time, it was actually daytime that this happened i was in our bathroom and this was a very old house i don't remember how old it was but it was a very old house and it had a standard you know sink and a standard medicine cabinet and then there was a bathtub off to the side and up above the bathtub it was like another like medicine type thing but it didn't have a mirror on the front of it and the cabinet actually went really deep into the wall it was like a medicine cabinet, but like deeper into the wall and it didn't have a mirror on top. I don't know what that would be called, but it was right above the bathtub. For some reason, that door would never shut all the way. And I don't remember why, but that door wouldn't shut all the way. <clears throat> and I remember I was standing in the bathroom one day and I was looking in the mirror. And then just for some reason, I just felt like I had to look at that other cabinet. And I turned and legit there was a head inside the cabinet i couldn't see nothing else in there just this gray you could see features and everything this, this gray head and it like right here was at the very bottom of the cabinet so it was like here's the bottom of the cabinet and that's where his neck met so the rest of his body could have been in the wall for all i know i don't know but that's all i could see was his head and he was looking straight I, mean, I could see details. I knew he had a mustache. Um, he had, but his uh, eyes were blackened. He couldn't see eyes. It was just black. And he had his mouth open, but he couldn't see teeth or anything. He was just, it was black. And he had blood on one side of his face. And he had dark hair and mustache was dark as well. And he was looking straight. And then he just ever so slightly turned and looked at me. And I don't even remember ever leaving the bathroom. I don't know how I got out of there. <clears throat> but I, I vividly remember that. Well, of course, I said something. And of course, nobody believed me. Everybody just said I was crazy. And this is before I got into horror movies as well. And then... I had a TV in my bedroom and I had the lights off and this is sometime after this happened. I don't remember timelines at all because this was a long time ago. I was watching something on the TV and I had a remote and I just clicked it off and I went to lie down and all the lights were off and I couldn't even see the, like the shadows from you know, the cars driving by. It was pretty dark that night. I saw a shadow of a person get up from the side of my bed and walk diagonal across my room into the closet. And that 
literally scared. I mean, it was a legit, it wasn't dark like a shadow person, it was more gray. And I've actually seen a gray kind of shadow person here at this house too, down in the basement, but I haven't caught evidence yet. I am determined I am gonna catch evidence. I set up a camera down there and had it record after we had an incident the other day, and but I didn't get anything that I could tell. But anyway, back to this. I wish I would have had filming equipment and knew how to do this stuff back then, but it was so long ago. <clears throat> but yeah, I would love to be able to have the opportunity to go investigate this house. And I don't know much history about it, I just know it was really old. But we would hear footsteps in the attic. Of course, you know, my family's just like, oh, it's just a raccoon or something up there. But it legit sounded like a person walking around up there. And I remember pretty much almost everybody had an experience at this house except for my dad. And even if he had an experience, he wouldn't admit to it. But my mom was home. I'd already done moved out at this point. And my brother is, he's a lot younger than me. He was staying at a friend's house and my dad at the time worked third shift. So my mom was home alone. And she was doing something and she heard my brother calling for, for her from the bathroom. She gets up, starts to go towards the bathroom and she realizes she's the only one home. And then she remembers the stories that I would tell. So she's like, nope. I am not going over there. So that's the most scary thing that I know of that she had. We no longer live at this house, or they don't either. I don't know who lives there now, but, or if they've had experiences. And my brother had an experience, but his depiction of his ghost, he saw it in the garage. But his description was a blonde haired man so I'm pretty sure there was more than one ghost in this house but I don't think the one in the garage was very nice I think the one I saw was nicer I mean he tried to get attention he pinched me in the back of the neck a few times accidentally I was sitting on the floor doing something I had a dog at the time she would not let me be in my bedroom by myself she always had to be in there with me <clears throat> But I remember one time I was sitting, I think I had the door open. I was sitting on the floor doing something and I elbowed something and thinking it was my dog, I turned around and there was nothing there. My dog was not, I think she was up on the bed or no, she wasn't in, in there at all, if I remember correctly. But yeah, there was nothing behind me that I elbowed. And I, my ex, we went there to do laundry one time and you know like i said my dad worked third shift and i'm putting laundry in the trunk of the vehicle that we had and my ex is like oh your dad's coming out it must be time for him to leave for work and there was like this leeway thing connected from the house to the garage he's like he's walking down the leeway i'm like that's strange because he doesn't go that way so I look up and I don't see anybody. I'm expecting my dad to come walking into the garage. And nobody comes walking into the garage, but there is another door that goes towards the backyard. So even if there was a person there, they could have went out the back and took off. But it looked like it came from the house and walked down the leeway. And it must look like a person enough because my ex thought it was my dad. But I didn't witness that, it's just something that he saw. I mean, we was out in the back route, backyard wandering around looking to see if there was somebody hiding back there. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of something else that happened in the house. I know there was other things. My cat that I'd had, but she was old, but my cat had a heart attack in the house. Just all of a sudden she was, I mean, she always seemed fine. And then my dad said just one day I was off somewhere. I was in high school at the time. And, and my dad said she just started walking around meowing and then she just fell over and had a heart attack. <clears throat> I never knew if that was connected or not because no other animals got 
anything happen to them. But yeah, that's some of my first ghost stories from the first house that I had experienced. I wouldn't say it was my first house, but the first house that I had experiences in. And ever since then, almost every house we've, I've lived in has had something happen to us. So I don't know if something had followed me or what. I don't know if anything did follow me because at the time I was, uh, we'd, I'd moved out. It was everybody, all my family had moved out of this house and I was working at a pizza place and somebody called for a pizza. It was a delivery. So I asked what your address is and they told me my address. I'm like, oh, I used to live there a long time ago. And the person legit said, I swear this place is haunted. Their words, I, I, I guess they would hear knocking at the front door a lot. Um, that's what they told me, but I didn't bring it up. They said it to me. I'm just said, it's just without even thinking. I was like, oh, that place is so haunted. Cause I'm like all excited because I'm getting validated by somebody I don't even know. Then. One day driving by, I see a for sale sign shortly after that, so they moved. I don't know if it corresponded with me validating their experiences or not, but yeah, shortly after I validated theirs, I was all excited about it because somebody else had had experiences that was willing to admit to it, just come out and admit to it. And <laughs> that was funny. Now there's some else is living there now I've never had contact with them so I have no idea if they've had experiences or not but I thought that was funny but I just thought I would share one of my very first um, several first ghost experiences with y'all but make sure like subscribe and have fun watching bye